With this podcast, I want to talk about Saturn's entry into Pisces, which uh, commences on the 8th of March, 2023. Now, the planet Saturn takes about three years to go through a sign. Um, And my approach to this uh, topic would be to look at the individual characteristic of Saturn and then the individual characteristic of Pisces. Okay? So, here we go. Fundamentally, what Saturn represents is knowledge. Self-knowledge. But it's a different type of knowledge. You know, self-knowledge is not knowledge of physics. It's not knowledge of chemistry. It's not knowledge of uh, any other intellectual subject. What Saturn represents is the knowledge you have acquired about yourself. How much of yourself do you really know with respect to the world or reality as it looks around you? So, it requires a context. Saturn, in your natal chart, is describing your level of self-knowledge within the context of the sign it is placed and the house that it is placed in. This is very important. Now, in order to delineate or to give an analogy of what Saturn really, the type of self-knowledge that Saturn really provokes, I will use an analogy, an allegory, borrowed from a biblical narrative. You see, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, okay, it's an allegory, it's a story designed to teach you something. And that thing that it is designed to teach you is what I want to explain to you. And for some of you, this will be shocking. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they were in a state of bliss. They didn't know anything. They didn't know anything about themselves. They just knew that they were, or they are, and that's it. Now, they existed in a state that Saturn despises. Because it's a state of self-ignorance. The type of self-ignorance that leads to inaction the inability to take responsibility for anything. And so Saturn became the serpent that spoke to Eve, allegorical Eve, to convince her that there is a deeper nature of reality which she cannot see because she has been blocked from that perspective. And the job of Saturn was to entice her to envisage the nature of this reality. Because it is a reality where you can take responsibility. You can choose. You can have free will. You can exhibit free will. Now, this is a concept that Eve did not know. Neither did Adam. They had no idea what free will was. What is it? I mean... How do you determine what is free and what is not? How do you determine choice? How do you choose? And you see, choice is impossible when you can see all the connections. So what does choice mean? Whichever pathway you go, whatever choice you make, is already prescribed. And so there is no invitation to responsibility. And so the nature of self in such a condition is an extremely shallow one in that sense. Bear in mind that this is just an allegory. It's just a story. It's not real, (laughs) you know. It's not meant to be taken literally. It is designed to teach you something. Now, when Eve plucked the proverbial fruit and she ate from it, her eyes opened Her eyes open to what? Her eyes open to the nature of her own independent reality. 
where choice is possible. And the only way she could have entered into that reality is that she made a choice. Now, normally, such a thing is impossible. You see, Adam and Eve existed in a state where choice was impossible. You, you know, you only make a choice when you see that there is a choice. They didn't have the aptitude to see the possibility of a choice. And so Eve, allegorical Eve in the narrative, she broke that reality by making a choice. Now, the narrative is woven in such a way that there was a serpent, etc., etc. Okay? And that's because the stage that humanity has been in the last few thousand years is more, they're more like children. And so these alleg allegorical stories have been woven to try to teach about deep mysteries. They're not really mysteries. They, I'd rather call them deep simplicities that you can only see when you have the sight. When your soul or your heart is still enough to grasp the simplicity of the concept. It's almost like, you know, having such a clear mind. But that's really what it is, you see. The serpent was absolutely incensed at these two creatures whom the Elohim had made. And they were basically just existed in a state of stupidity. They had no idea what they were. They had no idea what they were doing. They had no idea what this was. They, they, they had no clue about anything. Not even themselves. And so when they became self-aware through the simulation of a choice, because there's a reason why I call it a simulation, because it's interesting to understand who actually put all of this drama together. Okay? Because it is a, it's an allegorical drama. Okay? That's why it's in the form of a narrative. When they became self-aware, what was the first thing they became aware of? They became aware of themselves. Now, that is what Saturn does. And by becoming aware of yourself, you are driven into a different type of reality. It is a reality where limitations become possible, but also boundaries. And so, because you have limitations and you have boundaries, you have the definition of something that can be a physicality. It is the encapsulation of will. Where will is giving shape, it is giving form, and it is giving structure. Prior to that, it didn't have any structure. And the reason why it takes on a structure, a form, is because now you can use it to implement whatever you consider to be free will. And this is where the intrinsic property of Saturn comes from, as the denizen of responsibility, the denizen of form, of structure, of limitation, of boundaries. It is the quintessential human attribute on this in this third dimensional density. Now, a lot of people look at it as a bad thing. Oh, the serpent in the, in the garden was bad. And this was... No, there's no such thing. If it were bad, if it were not good, the Elohim would not have put it there. That is the process of bringing a human being into awareness of themselves. Now, it doesn't matter what you think about this. But as human beings begin to create more significant artificial intelligence system at some point in time the only true test for independent thought would be disobedience that's really what it is and not because disobedience has some intrinsic value as evil no but if you must simulate independence because independence is hard it's really hard to create everything in the universe is naturally linked whether you are aware of it or not the creation and the simulation of independence is some of one of the hardest things to achieve albeit impossible and so the best you can do is to create a kind of uh, simulated ex experience of independence and that's what saturn does because the actual nature of reality is literally neptunian everything is connected everything is one and the same but within such a state responsibility really becomes impossible and so the drama that is human, the human collective experience and the human individual experience cannot be played out. Remember, that drama was set into motion for a reason. It is a drama that has been taking place within a theater, within a stage that was carefully created. The essence of that drama is proof. 
And that brings us to another attribute of Saturn. Whatever Saturn contacts requires proof. It requires evidence. Evidence is the nature of its conviction. And once evidence sits within the self, evidence of what the self is, and that forms the basis for action in what looks like a physical world. That forms the basis for authority, responsibility, and action. That's really what it is. And so it, it represents, a, it's a part of growing up. Because at some point in time, a human, as you become more aware, you realize that, look, wait a second. There ain't nobody really coming to save me. I'm on my own. So if I want to get this, I got to do it on my own. I got to put in the effort. People don't start thinking like that until they have achieved a certain level of maturity. Now, if you, know, if you have to do it on your own, you have to know how to do it. And that's one of the other extensions of the nature of this planetary influence called Saturn. You have to know how to bring about outcomes and objectives. And you have to do it in ways that prove who you are to yourself, not to anybody else. Because the conviction that you are seeking is yours and yours alone. But the conviction does something to you. It dispels self-ignorance. Because self-ignorance is the nature of doubt. But you question yourself. And when you question yourself in that way, you undermine your own personal authority. And so you cannot lead. You cannot succeed in the material world. Because, you know... It's a theater. I don't want you to take it too seriously. It's a, the it's, a, it's a simulation on a stage. Because the essence of reality, the, real, the substance of reality itself, it's Neptunian, it's Piscean. It has no form. Saturn is able to take that Neptunian or Piscean form, formlessness rather, and to give it structure. To impose upon it a structure. And what does that structure become? It is the structure of will. Which now defines the nature of choice. But it's all an illusion. It's all a simulation. Because in reality, the, all the pathways are connected. And as, since they are connected, there is really no choice. But that cannot define the human experience. Because... The entire purpose of human beings, and I'll, I'll tell you this based on an example. Now, these things I'm saying to you, you're not going to hear them anywhere else. This is how I teach astrology. Okay? There's so much more that most people don't understand. Even astrologers who've been practicing for, se for decades. Now, I'm privy to these things and I like to share them. But I like to share them within controlled environments. You know, I, it's, it's not a palatable thing to see important things being messed up and taken for granted. But the Saturnian experience is an, is an important one. You see, there's a reason why when you look into creation, you know, creation of life, biological life on the planet Earth, you see unicellular organisms and then you see increasing levels of complexity until you now get to that's biological complexity until you now get to something as sophisticated as the human brain the human nervous system the human immune system i mean these are sophisticated complex systems why does nature evolve ever more sophisticated complex systems now the reason why nature evolves that you know this was uh, what the conclusion i came to in my book the five principles of organized complexity because the, what nature prioritizes is knowing. Knowing. Because in order to achieve the knowledge of itself, nature comes full circle. It can look at itself and delight in what it sees or what it perceives. Also, it comes to understand itself. It comes to know what it is. 
Some people don't know why. Why? You know, you never stop to ask the question. Why? You look at another human being. Ask yourself, you know, in amazement. What exactly is this creature I'm looking at? What exactly am I? Why, why, do, why do we exist? I mean, this is ridiculous. Why do we exist? Why, why do we have people running all over the place on planet Earth? What is this experience? Where does it come from? Why does it need to be? And the scientists will tell you that human evolution, you know, we've been evolving for millions of years. But why? What is the goal? Well, in the case of a human being, the goal is a deep awareness of self. Because it's not self that you're really becoming aware of. It's everything. It's the universe because everything in the universe is what makes self possible. And so when you learn of self, you are really learning of everything else in the universe. And that's exactly what Saturn wants. It wants us to understand who we are, where we come from, what this universe is. And then we can finally begin to see, to understand who the Elohim is. And how he brought this universe, why he brought this universe into existence. Because in that process, there is joy. What is creation? Creation is an expression of joy. Have you, have you tried creating something? You try imagining something from, from scratch. And then working tirelessly to bring it to f- fruition. After a while, it's not the, the only benefit you, you derive is that it is your creation. It is your child. It is your baby. There is a, there's an intrinsic joy that comes from that. And the vehicle that is allowing us to do that, because you cannot do that if you do not take responsibility. If will has no form. And that's what Saturn tries to do. Albeit, in order to achieve that, Saturn does something to our human consciousness. It truncates it. It does not allow it to connect So it fragments it, giving you a very limited scope so that all you can perceive is yourself disconnected from everything else. Now, when this goes too far, you get the kind of world that we live in, where the only thing that is that is permissible or that is allowed to 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 exist is has to be physical. Everything else nonsense. That's an extreme form of Saturnian thinking. Okay. Now, in order to try to forestall this, religion was introduced into that type of atomist material thinking. To try to introduce a balance into the whole thing. But the problem is this. You cannot introduce religion into or something like that into Saturn. Saturn must grow from Pisces. Do you understand what I mean? Good. So I'm going to leave the energy of Saturn the light of Saturn for now. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what's the, the principal gift of the planet Saturn is illumination. A deep and concrete illumination regarding the nature of self. Now, when this illumination, when it goes too far, you tend to see everything as disconnected and fragmented. And that the, the result of that is conflict, war, racism, especially anti-black racism. And you start having things like white supremacy. I mean, this is ridiculous. If you could see the actual nature of the world, you would realize how ridiculous this is. And so, let us talk about the nature of Pisces. Like, like I've said, the origin, the nature of existence, the quintessential form of existence is Piscean. And what is Pisces? You see, Pisces and Neptune basically have the same type of flavor. They're formless. They represent a dissolution of will back into wherever it is, whatever it is it came from. So back into the Edenic, the Adamic or the, uh, the pre-Satonian stage. That's really what it is. Back into bliss. Back into ignorance. Now the whole point is that it is not going back into ignorance the way that it emerged from ignorance. It has gained something. And that is the entire purpose. It has gained the awareness of self. Which it didn't have prior when it first emerged into Aries. 
It didn't have that. Once it has lived the life complete, it has gained the awareness of self. It has gained, it has understood and enjoyed the joy of limitation. You know? Because when eternity is all that there is and eternal connectedness is all that there is, then there is no differentiation. Differentiation then becomes like a holiday. But you have the opportunity to experience a self, a disconnected self. I mean, if you take it too far, it can drive you crazy. But there is a joy on itself where you actually, you get to feel like, like an individual creator. You get to feel like the Elohim. You, you get to experience the nature of a concrete will. That's why a lot of people run around the place thinking that they're gods. You see? That's when it's gone, that's the insanity of it all. When it's gone too far. So we are really here to learn how to manage that experience and not forget what we are, what we originally are. So that is Pisces. It is a dissolution. And so the entry of Saturn into Pisces really is the nature of contradiction. Because one of the interesting, most people who have prominent Piscean placements or prominent uh, Neptunian placements in their natal chart, they don't experience reality the way, you know, their experience of reality is very difficult to define. And that, therein lies one of the problems. Because, for instance, if you have ne Neptune conjunct your ascendant, you live in a different type of reality that to, to most people. It's just that you may not be able to explain to the average person what that reality feels like. Because in truth, you don't know. It's just undefinable. And yet you experience it. And so you experience yourself as undefinable. And yet you are. Because there are no forms and there are no boundaries to the way that you perceive yourself. You see, most people will describe the Piscean experience or the Neptunian experience as deeply mystical and spiritual. But they are loath to tell you what that means exactly. What does it mean? Spiritual, mystical. What do these things mean? What is a mystical experience? Well, if Saturn is the nature of conviction, and conviction being well-defined knowledge paths or our paths of awareness, for instance, you take a, 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 a something like mathematics. It's very precise, you know. It's based on rules, action, and its preciseness is born from the fact that it contains limitations. It cannot be everything else. If it could, it'd be useless. So Pisces is the opposite of that. It contains everything else. Everything is possible, or so it seems. And so the nature of mysticism is the lack of clarity when it comes to how A becomes B, becomes C, becomes D, becomes all the way to Z. You just don't see how it goes. You see A and then you see Z and then you cannot make the connection, the logical connection between A and Z. And so you assume that the whatever is the gap in between must be a mystical experience. You simply don't know how. And it is within that sense of cloudiness or fogginess in understanding that is where deception lives for those who can who decide to take advantage of that and that is one of the dangers of the piscean experience you see we've been in an age of pisces if the you know the traditional astrologers are to be believed and there's a good reason why they should be <laughs> We've been in the age of Pisces for 2,160 years. And so what, how human beings have experienced their reality within this time frame is that they have no idea what they are. They have no idea. They just see human beings on the planet and, you know, they've made up all sorts of narratives to explain this reality. Because it is so sophisticated, so mind-bending. It's beyond belief. When you begin to look at the complexity inherent within a living cell, you cannot understand how did this come about? Where did it come from? Who built it? And how come we can't see the builder? 
And within this space, the imagination runs wild. And so most people attribute the Piscean experience to the use of the imagination. You can see the reason why now. And as long as we're telling ourselves stories, we can tell all sorts of stories. We can tell stories that don't make any sense. And we've been doing a lot of that the last 2,160 years. We have told stories that are so blatantly false. And the reason why you know you're fa- they're false is because you don't believe, you don't, they're, they're not convincing. Force is used to make them convincing. And therein lies their danger. People believe all sorts of falsehoods today. In fact, the general like the, the, the main falsehood regarding the, what human beings have come to consume the last 2,160 years is the falsehood regarding the nature of self and the falsehood regarding who God is. These two things represent how what danger, that erroneous investment that human beings have created in the age of Pisces. And so, it is necessary that if we are on the cusp of which, I don't believe we're on the cusp anymore. I believe that the age of Aquarius officially starts on the 23rd of March, 2023, when Pluto makes its ingress into Aquarius. Now, a lot of people have different opinions about this, but this is mine. And I have very good reasons for saying that. I have a podcast regarding Pluto's ingress into Aquarius. You might want to listen to that. It's a paid podcast. But you might want to listen to it because it will shock the living daylights out of you. Now, prior to this, the beginning of this ingress, there must be a falling away of falsehoods. Because if you know what Aquarius is, (laughs) Aquarius is a reduction of Pisces. That's all I'm going to say about it because I teach these things, okay? And. uh, if you want to learn more about it, you're going to have to come join my classes. Only for the brave. So before truth can re-emerge into the world and deception fall away, there needs to be a falling off process. Where, because truth is so powerful. It's ridiculously powerful. We have, we, we have nothing like that in reality. That an exposure to sudden truth can kill you. Shock. And so the way the Elohim operates is that human beings need to be gradually introduced into truth. Well, gradually, in a sense, it's still going to be extremely shocking. And so the falling away process starts by Saturn going into Pisces. So you now understand what this entry, what this time period will be, starting from the 8th of March, 2023. There is going to be a falling away process. And it's, I mean, the difference between 8th of March and the 23rd of, of April is just a few days. So it's going to be rapid. It's going to be intense. Because falsehood is going to die. Literally. It's going to end. And it's going to be brought to an end by shocking processes or shocking revelations. And so really, what you have from the 8th of March... All the way to the 2020, all of, from 8th of March, all the way for the next three years. Because Pluto is not going to just sit in, in Aquarius. It's going to ingress into it at the first degree and then come back right back into Capricorn. And it's going to keep doing this for the next two years, basically. Okay? And so while it is doing that, Saturn will be traversing through Pisces. Helping that process because the next three years of Saturn's entry into Pisces or Saturn's transit into Pisces is the revelation. And what, I mean, you can't have a revelation if there's no concealment. But it's not what people think. Some people think that because there's a book in the Bible called the Revelation, then all of a sudden this is what it means. You have no idea what these things mean. If you have taken them literally, if you have taken those understandings literally, then you have completely missed it completely. They're not literal. There's nothing literal about these narratives. Okay? Okay? And so, the age of concealment begins to wind down. And you have no idea what what is concealed and what is not. You know, look at at the world. The world as as it stands today is concealment in material form. And what is concealed is truth. Now, what is truth? Truth is the nature of the self. 
truth is the nature of God. And once that understanding begins to seep into your consciousness, it transforms you because you, you begin to see connections. Now, you're not going to be seeing the connections like in the pre-Adamic state. Because now you have gained something. You have gained an awareness of self. Now, that self is now placed within the context of all connections. And that is what represents Saturn in Pisces. So, it's something new, really. I know some people like to look at Saturn's previous entry into Aquarius or previous transit into Pisces 29 years ago. You see... Yes, but no, reality doesn't repeat. It rhymes. You know? And this has to do with the respatiation of the sun as it moves around the galaxy. So you're never really at the same point twice. Okay? The respatiation has to do with the orientation to the central black hole. The Seshekem Uru. Okay? The big black thing at the center of the galaxy. Because if you've been following my podcast, if you've been reading my books, you will understand the way I describe blackness. Blackness is not a color. It is a physics. It is the physics of existence. It is the physics that brings life and makes life possible. It is that which gives rise to the Neptunian reality, which eventually morphs into the Saturnian reality. It creates the stage for us to act out what it means to be human, what it means to be a self. What it means to be an independent, you know, responsible unit separate from everything else. This is ridiculous. It's such a unique experience that we have no idea how unique this is, really. Because we take it for granted because it's in everything. It's how we perceive ourselves. It's how we perceive everything. So we think that this is the way everything else. No, that's not the way everything else is. The idea of an independent disconnected existence is as unique as anything else it's such a unique experience that most living i mean humanity is the only thing that really feels like that as far as we know on this earth animals creatures and all that they don't know what that kind of they don't they don't ha- they don't know what an independent sense of self is If they knew, they'd stop being animals. They stopped acting like animals. They're gonna act human, because when you next time you look in the mirror, what you're looking at, right, is a picture, an image, of self questioning, of something that questions itself, questions existence. And the reason why it does that is that's the Saturnian experience, because the urge is to know, know thyself. When it, what it means to know thyself is, is basically, it's, it's very deep. The final realization, the final realization, the final uh, realization of self, I'm not going to tell you what that is. Not in this podcast. Because like I said, it's a theater. The human experience is a theater. The earth and everything around the solar system, the universe, it's a theater designed to create this human experience for us to prove something. It is the nature of conviction, how conviction is earned. And so when a human being begins to complete that experience in the sense of knowing thyself, then conviction begins to set in. And conviction is the nature of physical will. With conviction, men have built machines that fly. With conviction, men built the pyramids. Okay? So, Saturn in your natal chart, if you're one of those people who have Saturn very close uh, proximity to a personal planet, then the Elohim has instru- is instructing you to develop that concrete knowledge of self in that area, whatever self, if for instance, self as represented by the planet Venus. Okay? Now, Venus is an attractive uh, will is an attractive type of energy or awareness but it attracts like natures within things 
it doesn't force things together. They come together by their intrinsic natural affinity. And so when Saturn conjuncts Venus in a sense or makes a very important aspect of Venus, it wants to manifest the nature of that Venus as a physical reality. It wants to bring it into existence. And so it creates a theater within which the deep sense of knowledge concerned with that conjunction or that aspect can play out. And so the gift it is giving you in that respect is that the, what it means to be that Venusian quality becomes an aspect of your knowing about yourself as concrete as anything else with conviction and that means that it becomes a manifested physical reality do you understand so that is as much as i'm going to say about saturn's transit through pisces i know it's it doesn't give you the as in predict one or two or say this is going to happen or that's not going to happen but it gives you the fundamental background which you can now apply to this to, uh, within different contextual situations that you now understand that the real purpose of Saturn within your natal chart is to bring about conviction, a knowledge, a deep sense of knowing that is as practical and as useful that it fits into the simulated experience that is physical reality. But there's also something to add. That experience of physical reality is always contained within a milieu, a social milieu, that usually revolves around your generation. Okay? That's why Saturn spends three years in a sign. So that you share that quality with a whole lot of people born within that time period. And that represents the boundary of your physical experience. So if you have any questions, uh, or if you want to have a natal chart reading done, or you want to join my classes, all the descriptions will be in the video details. Uh, you can send me a message. Thank you.